Hey guys, Audit Mcock here again, and today we're going to talk about the top 10 mutants in the game, or at least according to me. And this one was pretty hard for me because there are a lot of mutants that I like, and a lot of mutants I could have brought into the top 10. And also the order of the top 10 was super hard for me because there are so many good champions in the mutant class. But here we go, and um, this is going to obviously gonna make some people disagree but um, let's go in number 10 we have a champ that I barely use actually but uh, it's Cable Cable is um, a pretty nice mutant champ and uh, all around just um, pretty good he has some um, different uses especially his um, his ability on the heavies to cause the degens and also the concussion on the special 2 are, are super nice and also if you get to the special three where you can gain a, a, a true strike for a long time is is pretty good and then um, when fighting against bleeders if you fuck up he puts a degen on the opponent and also with the the extra damage when um, <coughs> when the poison uh, duration is over so he ca and he has a pretty nice synergy with another champ on the list apocalypse so overall just a decent champ and can do a lot of uh, different things with both regen, incinerate, the concussion, the true strike. Overall uh, a champ that I for sure need to learn to use even more than I do at the moment. So number 10 is Cable. And then the next guy is actually a guy that I bring to Alliance War quite often. And I barely fight with him even though I could. But that's uh, the White Magneto. So in number nine, we have the white Magneto. And in a sense, he reminds a little of the red one, except he doesn't have the big power up like the, the red Magneto has. Uh, where he shines compared to the other one is his pre-fight, the guidance boost, which can bypass limber or other kind of uh, effects because it's a passive stun. So keep that in mind. But when you use him as an attacker, he's actually not that bad either. If you build up his prowess, he can deal a lot of damage on both his special one, but also his special two and three, and um, and the damage quite stack up. So certainly also a guy that I in the future need to play around with more. So number nine is uh, the white Magneto. I really love his pre fights. I mean they are so good for so many fights, and also even if you don't need the passive stun, is uh, and a free attack boost. So remember to use him uh, wisely, and remember it only. It's only metal champs and uh, and humans who get the bonus of the uh, of the passive stun. Number eight is a champ that I actually hate, <laughs> and that's fun to say when he's number eight on the list. But I never use him, as in never ever use him. And there are a few reasons for it. One, I haven't played enough with him, and two, I always run suicides. But that's Professor X. Professor X is my number eight. And his true bonus comes from repeating his uh, special one and building up the falters, building up the charges and then deal a lot of damage. And um, <clears throat> when you learn his mechanics, he's fairly simple to use, but it requires you have to throw a lot of specials. So with, with all my, uh, with me running suicides, it's often just not uh, really a good thing for me. So that's why he comes in maybe low to some but uh number eight in my in my list at least then we have number seven and that's a champ that i actually use basically every day i bring him to alliance quest and i really like him in a normal fight he's decent but in some fights he just shines and that's namor and namor has a lot of different abilities but what really makes him great is his signature ability so when you get him to max sick, whether that's a 4 star, 5 star or 6 star, he takes 100% reduced damage from all sources while attacking the opponent um, and then brings it back to them. And that even with suicides, that's also the case. So when you hit them, he reflects the suicide damage. Um, he, has some, uh, he has some nice uh, bleeds. And then when you trigger his outrage, he just deals enormous amount of damage. And you can fire back to back specials and heal from the specials and use the Imperious Rex where you deal some extra damage. And he's just overall a pretty good counter for some notes. And um, with the reflect, if you deal, have to deal with an Electro or if you have the 
the stun reflection you can parry and hit them and then you deal back the damage so overall he has some nice uses in an average fight he wouldn't be special but for those special circumstances he's a he's a really good champ then we have number six and number six on my list is actually also a champ i don't use a lot um he's a great champ and i have him at rank three even though he's unduped uh, and that's omega red omega red really needs his signature ability to deal more passive damage uh, with the spores but he can also work without uh, the dupe ability just a lot more a lot weaker damage so and the the basic way to fight him is actually just stay close to them just like when you basically it's the same kind of fight as as quick in a sense you stay close to them you put on spores and you can lock in the spores with a heavy um, and then you can do all kind of things you can remove all the death spores with a special three and you can do some you can do some healing you can use the special one to also drain something <clears throat> but mainly you just want to keep uh, keep close to the opponent keep hitting them even though it's uh, into the block and then do heavies to lock the spores if you have to dodge away so a really great champ overall and benefits a lot from suicide and it's fairly easy to use when you've played with him a lot number five a champ that i used to hate actually i used to hate this guy a lot uh, i love the character per se but not in the game but lately he's been growing on me also because i've been using him more and also with the calf quest where with the bleed and he's bleed immune and stacks up that's colossus Losses uh, is growing on me a lot and he's a fairly easy champ to use you can just uh, keep on uh, parry heavying for instance to, to deal enormous amounts of uh, damage um, also if you pair him with Omega Red he becomes uh, another powerhouse and just stacking up those um, those armors to deal more damage and, and then fire off a big special or keep parry heavying with him he's 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 pretty good and if you saw my videos uh, with the Cavalier quest, he just went through that one pretty, pretty single-handedly. So a great champ in number five. And then the top four champs are super hard because I've been going back and forth and back and forth on these guys, but um, and girls for that matter, because there's a girl also. But number four for me is the Red Magneto, and. He could easily have been number one, two, or three, but for me, he's fourth. He doesn't really need the dupe. It helps a little, but uh, he's pretty good on duped as well. And where he shines is basically against all metal champs because he can stack up. Uh, for instance, he ignores whatever disadvantages there is. He ignores everything they do basically because of his um, <coughs> his magnetize or whatever you want to call it. And if you want to learn how to use him, you can uh, look at my video. I made a video about um, about Magneto on how to use him. Stack up those prowess, fire a big special three. And uh, if they are bleeding moon, they basically just die. And if they're not bleeding moon, then they get a lot of damage from the bleeds afterwards. Such a nice champion. You can use him in all game modes. Um, so insanely powerful if you play him correctly. The only problem is I think there are three better champs and that's that's a luxury problem first world problem right one two and three I found them back and forth and I used to have number three at number one at one point but he's number three for me now uh, after talking to several people is that especially Dion um, so number three is apocalypse and apocalypse if you asked me three weeks ago I would probably have put him at number one Apocalypse is just so super versatile. A lot of people only use him to make someone a horseman and then they forget about a lot of the fights. It's actually just better to use Apocalypse. So he has so many different uses. He gains those genetic codes, so he g it deals more damage with the prowess. Um, he gets immunity from uh, bleeds and poisons throughout the fight. His heavy attacks inflicts um, bleeds, his special one, two, especially one and two deals uh, immense amount of damage but uh, also his special three is uh, super nice because uh, he re-triggers all the the different stuff when he fires the special three and then you have the the horseman on top if he has four charges at the start of the fight he can start a pre-fight and then the mutant fighting afterwards 
will get the following things like bleed resistance, offensive ability accuracy, and and when they purify a debuff, they go unblockable. So just a powerhouse, and I've been using him a lot, both to make people a horseman, but also just to fight with Apocalypse himself. He's a super powerful champion, versatile, and you can use him in all, I've used him a lot in Alliance War also. He's he's just a great champion, a, a big health pool also. So if you make mistakes, he's very good. And then we have number one and two, and um, it's super close. It's super, super close, but number two is gonna go to Kitty Pride. And I haven't used an Awakening Gem on her yet, even though I have one. Um, and that's because I haven't uh, had to use her for anything uh, specific yet. But her way to build up prowesses and deal a lot of damage is just super unique. She reminds me a lot of Ghost, where you have to face in and ignore the damage. And she's super easy to get to three. You can either parry or you can just dash in and intercept or hit them and then you stack up the prowess. And once you get to three prowess, which you get in five, six seconds, then she can just ignore damage basically. You can even take special threes or whatever when you face. So she's just super, super hard hitting and then you build up to a big special two and it's just game over. So such a great champ and uh, fun design as well. I really liked the way and uh, if you saw the video where I pulled her and I pulled Human Torch, that was, <laughs> that was crazy. So number two, Kitty Pride. And then comes number one, my favorite mutant, also just from the playstyle, is Archangel. I made a video about Archangel, so go back and watch that if you want to see how, if you don't know how he works. But he just shuts down so many nodes. You can, and he's super easy to use actually. Mainly just parry and heavy because every time you do like a crit hit, he gets a bleed on. If he has bleeds on, then if you block, then you can put poisons on. If he has poisons on, you can put. Um, those neurotoxins and when he when the when the opponent has neurotoxins on him the fight just ends basically uh, it shuts down a lot of healing or whatever you have on them when you get the neurotoxins on and then you just keep parry heavy until they die super effective in both long and short fights and in alliance war alliance quest in different quests uh, even when you pair him with apocalypse and get him to a horseman he will just deal even more damage and he will also heal from the bleed when you have suicide so overall just a fantastic champion and i i really use him a lot and i i really love that i pulled him as the six star so here's the final list top 10 mutants and um let me know in the comment section what you think about my rankings which one did i rank wrong or did i get it completely right how is your top 10 did you like the video remember to like the video and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe tomorrow there's going to be a video about five mutants who could really need some help in a sense in the game so thank you for stopping by and i'll see you again tomorrow